Hey guys, DM Cubing, and today we have a requested tutorial. Kim Aguilar asked for a magnetic GAN 357 tutorial, so here it is, and here we go. Hey guys, this is my tutorial for the GAN 357. You'll note that this puzzle, like many other puzzles that have a three-part corner piece, these are types of puzzles that usually can come in a stickerless variety. It shares a lot of similarities with other tutorials I've done. The main exception is, instead of placing the edge piece magnet first, in this particular puzzle, we're going to glue the corner piece magnet first. This is because the edge piece in this puzzle doesn't have a convenient little place that we can repeat over and over, like the bottom part of a post that we can position the magnet time and time again and have it align perfectly each time we place a magnet. So we're going to use the corner piece this time, and you'll note that inside the corner piece is this nice little ledge and this little tapered down part on the side of the QB piece where the magnet just comfortably rests and it will provide us a precise location uh, where we can just repeat the same location over and over for each corner piece magnet. For this project, I used my new N35 four millimeter by two millimeter magnets that I got from gossboys.com. Previously, when I used N35s, I used the ones from magnets365.com. While an excellent magnet, particularly in the GAN Air, those happen to be slightly undersized. You'll see here in this comparison photograph. So the Goss Boys magnets measure truly four millimeters by two millimeters, while the magnets 365 are just slightly undersized. Again, there's nothing wrong with those magnets. They just provide for a lighter magnetic pull. In this particular cube, the full-size four by two N35 magnets provided a great magnetic pull force. As with all of our 3x3 tutorials, you'll need 48 neodymium magnets. Again, I'm using the grade N35 4mm by 2mm magnets. The glue that I'm using here is Gorilla Brand Impact Tough Formula Super Glue. It's a thicker type glue, and I like this because it's less likely to run, and I can apply it directly to a stick, and then from that stick, the drop on the stick, I can apply the drop to the magnets. This way, I'm less likely to have glue running. And before we get to gluing, here's just some quick preliminary information about the cube. It measures 57 millimeters. It weighs 82 grams before magnets and after magnets, essentially 92 grams, just slightly over. So the weight of the magnets with glue adds about 10 grams of weight, which is equivalent to the weight of two U.S. nickels. The cube has a thickness of 0 0.042 inches on the edge pieces and 0 0.041 inches on the corner pieces. And here's the cube's magnetic imprint, the actual force of the magnets within the cube. It leaves a very nice symmetrical pattern. The GAN 357 uses a nut instead of a screw on its core. You'll need your GAN tool to loosen this up several turns before disassembling your cube. Once disassembled, it's a good idea to go ahead and wipe the QB pieces off before disassembling them. Disassembling the edge piece is fairly straightforward. Like most edge pieces, it's in two parts, and you can see the seam straight down the middle of it. You use a pretty good amount of force to squeeze and pull both halves away from each other. Don't squeeze so much that you actually damage it but it takes a little bit of effort to pull them apart, and you'll see this little white plastic retaining post inside. It's kind of cross-shaped. You can either remove this or leave it as is. I happen to remove mine, but it is pretty tricky. You can either wiggle it out with your fingers, but it'll kind of wear your fingers out, or you can use needle nose pliers, or you can just leave it in because it doesn't really get in the way. Just make sure not to get super glue on it. And here's the three-part corner piece. We can use our fingernail to get in between the base of it to start pulling it apart. It comes apart very easily with the sections hanging onto this middle column, which also very easily removes. Prior to gluing and positioning the magnets, I like to mark one end of my stick of magnets. I do this by placing a little piece of paper between the last two magnets. I remove the magnet that I'm gluing from the opposite end. I do this repeatedly each time. This avoids making any kind of mistake in polarity. 
Here you see the relationship of the stick of magnets to a newly placed corner piece magnet. Here's the target location of the corner piece magnet. And here you see it in relationship to the edge piece magnet. The gluing procedure is fairly straightforward. I like to place a small drop of glue on the stick and then apply this drop of glue onto the wall of the cubie piece where the magnet will go. I bring the stick of magnets to the side of the corner piece and I use it to split one magnet off of the stick of magnets. Then using the magnetic attraction I slide the magnet into its position. If it doesn't get there the first time you can always use a small screwdriver to give it a little nudge. Once the magnet's in place I'll pinch off the rest of the stick of magnets leaving one helper magnet on the outside of the cubie piece. This will hold the glued in magnet in position, particularly if I'm using a slow drying glue other than super glue. Once I've confirmed the correct position of the glued in magnet, I will add an additional drop of glue on top of it. This helps seal it in and it creates a better bond. Now I place the freshly glued corner piece third onto a flat surface and allow it to dry. I'll repeat this process 23 times until all 24 corner piece thirds have been glued. Once all corner piece thirds have been glued, it's a good idea to let them set for quite a while before handling them again. We don't want to disturb the glued in magnets. Once the corner piece magnets have set a while, say a minimum of one hour, we can go ahead and move on to gluing the edge piece magnets. We do this by placing a small drop of glue on the left interior wall near the bottom. As we grab the corner piece, we remove the helper magnet and pinch that between our thumb and index finger. This will hold in front of the edge piece. And then we align the two pieces, the corner piece and the edge piece, so that both pieces are flush with each other. Once the fronts are lined up, we ease our grip on the magnet and it will fall right into place. The magnetic pull force will pull it right into position. Now all that's needed is an extra drop of glue on this magnet. We set this pair with its newly glued edge piece magnet on a flat surface and allow it to dry. We continue to do 23 more pairs until they're all done. It's important at this point to allow the pieces plenty of time to dry. I generally let them sit overnight, but one thing I'll do to reduce fogging from one piece to another is I'll separate the pairs after they've set for about an hour or so, then let them sit overnight. You really don't want to assemble your cube with freshly glued magnets. What will end up happening is the interior part of the cubie pieces will fog. Some super glue produces this fogging type film on the plastic. You can reduce this by running a ceiling fan and having plenty of ventilation and separating the pieces once the magnets and the glue has set in pretty well. When you're assured that the glue has completely dried, it's time to reassemble the QB pieces. Starting with the edge piece, the reassembly is straightforward. Just make sure the insert is positioned correctly and push the two halves together. To reassemble the corner piece, start by positioning the column back into place. You can see that it has three indentations in the bottom of it. So you just push it forward until that's nice and snugly into one corner piece third. Here you see the column with one third part of the corner piece. Then add another third part. And these little tabs push together. And then finally add the last corner third part. You'll want to make sure that the base of the corner piece is pushed together, these three parts here. Even though I was diligent in being precise when I put my QB piece parts together, when I reassembled my cube I immediately noticed some catching issues. I think this was due in part to the way the cube is designed, how the seams line up with each other. I ended up using a Waylong GTS break-in tool, compressing the cube between the two parts of the break-in tool while doing a series of M slices. This helped tighten the cube up and now it's very smooth and all my catching issues are finished. I just bring this up in case you experience some catching issues that it might be that the way that the uh, QB pieces have been put back together. Even if you're very precise with it, sometimes there's still enough of a gap where they'll catch on each other. If you're new to magnetic cubes and you're questioning your polarity and you want to test for it, you can reassemble your cube without the core. This will immediately show if there are any issues with polarity. If there is a polarity issue, it will show up immediately because the cube will not be able to hold itself together without the core. If the polarity is correct, the magnetic attraction within the cube will hold it together in its cube-like shape. When you've confirmed that there are no polarity issues, it's time to reassemble and lubricate your cube. Now you can enjoy your new magnetic GAN 357.
Well, that's it, guys. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, just add them to the comments section and I will get to them. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Happy cubing. Bye. Bye.